Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Today is January 15th. Sorry for starting a little bit late. We're just trying to get everything together for you. Uh, I am Todd McFarlane, and we are here with the IHSCA podcast number 13, my lucky number. Oh, yes, um, I love that number. Yeah, it's it's great. I love especially Friday 13th, my favorite day. Okay, I see you. Um, with uh, me today is uh, Dalton. Uh, how do you say your last name? McGee. Is it's it harder just than McGee? It has to be. It's like, literally just McGee. Just McGee. Okay. Yep. Because it looks like it would not be. So. Oh, I know. I've heard it every way you could say it. I would. I mean, phonetically, it sounds like it could be McGee, but then you, you think, well, why would they just spell it regular McGee? Because yeah, we have to be difficult. Anybody that knows me would understand. <laughs> sounds good. Well, yes, yeah, so we're going to be talking about Fortnite today, what everyone's been yeah. waiting for. Um, everyone's so, been asking yeah. questions, and everything's been going crazy over the past, or at least the last uh, preseason event. So I think it's a good good time to talk about a lot of the stuff and get ready for the season and we'll still be answering questions every week but today is primarily going to be Fortnite. so if you're looking for Fortnite, here's the place if not still hang out with us if you want um we got quite a few people here thanks for stopping by and checking us out um i'm going to take a second seat to dalton here so uh he's going to be running most of it and then i'll just uh, help with questions in chat and uh you know ask any clarifying questions overall cool awesome yeah so uh the, probably the most orderly way to do this is going to be to go a couple uh, topic, like one topic at a time, talk about it, and then uh, give a moment for questions for people and try to field those, and we'll move on to the next topic because uh, there is a lot to discuss for Fortnite. Um, the first thing we should do is talk about how to join a custom Fortnite match. Oh, you're uh, right. So do you, do you have that up and available to show that on your screen? Um, I can momentarily just let me launch, okay uh, that's fine Fortnite. i have to get the i have to get the code up anyway so let me um what i'm going to do right now everybody is i'm going to uh host a custom lobby on fortnite fortnite's got to get open for me um but the capitals have a custom code so we can host scrims so that anyone across the state in the ihsea can enter this code and jump in on the same island together and it's been a lot of fun uh because you know previously for high school fortnite competition there wasn't a way to actually in real time play against the people in your state. Um, and we've got that going on. Fortnite is quickly finishing its install right now for me. So maybe we come back to that topic um, and move on to the next one. Um, we'll, we'll come back to that. Uh, let's move on to talking about how you report scores. So for those individuals in the IHSEA Discord, uh, there is a channel under the Fortnite category called for, uh, FN Scores. And what you do is you take a picture of the statistics screen. So when you get eliminated or once you've won, you can click statistics on your screen. And it shows at the top you placed blank, how many eliminations you had, assists, and any other statistic you could be interested in. What we care about is you placed and how many eliminations you have. And that screen is an objective, fair, true way to say exactly what you had. Um, there are not really bugs as far as reporting eliminations and placement goes, um, I suppose it is possible, but um, that's a case-by-case -case thing we deal with. It's, it's pretty much the final, this is what happened, this is what we give the score. It stops people from saying, well, I knocked this person, and I don't know why I didn't count that elimination, whatever they might say. Um, that's how we score it. So uh, whether you submit all those to your coaches and they submit it to that channel, or whether you are in the IHSCA Discord yourself and you put it there, um, the Fortnite Scores channel is strictly for to uploading those pictures. Um, it's not a channel where we're going to have people con conversing or anything like that because it gets too hard to follow. Um, but each Fortnite match is three consecutive games. So the easiest way to do it is to take a picture of all three games and then at the end of the whole match, upload all three together. That way we can see your name, all three games, and accurately input scores instead of scrolling back and forth through all the chat to figure out where your game one was, where your game two was, etc. So... Um, that's how you do it. Whether you're sending these statistics screens to your coaches or yourself, they have to go in the FN scores channel, and then we will uh, tabulate points every week from there. And thankfully, there's only one Fortnite match a week because that gets to be quite a bit of documenting uh, on our end. So, uh, Quick question. So for this, yeah. when they post a picture, should they attach their in-game name or what should they attach on the picture so that you can easily filter them out without having to... Like, so that way you at least possibly can search the pictures, would it be? Right, yeah, that's, yeah, I think that probably the easiest way to do it is to put their in-game name, so long as they're not changing that throughout the season. One of the things they do have to put on their interest for, or on the sign-up form for the season is their real name and their in-game name exactly as it appears in-game. So, uh, if they put their in-game name, we can say, okay, there they are on the list, here are their pictures, 
hear their points and move on to the next person. That's probably the easiest way to do it. Yeah, because then we can, if we can't find it or you say there's something wrong, we could easily quick search it without having to scroll through just pictures and try to look for right. for what it is. So yeah, definitely put your in-game name in the attachment um, when you post the pictures um, right. for those. That, that also, can, you can keep people from seeing your real name if you don't want them to see that as well. We, that That's something that only the staff has on our side as far as keeping score and keeping rosters. And it's not something we'll ever release to people. Uh, outside of your organization so we don't have to really worry about that yeah and then definitely um i was just gonna say something and i totally forgot what was i oh try not to change their name um that's one thing i know that's written in the league of legends rules is that no name changes during the season Um, usually we might do a quick change for playoffs possibly if need be but normally no name changes so once the season starts try to keep your name until the end of the season it's 10 weeks plus playoffs so if you can it also helps you put your name on the map so if you don't like your name now is the time to change it before we get all started. Um, that would be the best thing to do. Um, that way you're right. ready to go. And if you feel very strongly that you want to change your name, you can just at me in the Discord and ask for it. But we just need to make sure that everybody's on the same page when that happens. Because if you change it without letting any of the staff know, then we can't guarantee that your scores are going to be correctly counted. Um, Chad had a couple good questions about this, and it's come up a couple times. Um, first of all, somebody asked, about how to make sure people aren't sending a picture from an earlier time. Um, what we have done as far as the quarters cup went and as far as my guys in the capital scrims we've had have gone is that uh, we had them submit it. Uh, they have to submit before the next game. So I actually will redact what I said earlier about all three being together. I now remember why we didn't do that. It's because uh, they have to submit the picture immediately. And if they uh, don't, it doesn't get counted. And that prevents people from being able to Photoshop or uh, go look for an old picture, or whatever the case is. Uh, and plus, their duo partners will accurately uh, mirror those statistics. And if there's discrepancies, then we will deal with that. But um, with the amount of speed with which we've required people to post that, it hasn't been an issue up to this point. Correct. And that was another question someone asked. Is it screenshots per player or per duo? So per player. So bo- yeah, each player has to do it because um, while your placement will be the same as your duo partner, your eliminations may not. So um, as far as scoring goes, let's say Todd and I are partners and we get fifth place. We get uh, seven points for fifth place. Second to fifth, we get seven points. So as our duo, we get seven for that. If he gets three eliminations and I get two, that adds three for his. We're up to 10 and it adds two for me. We're up to 12 total points for that match. So um, the placement doesn't get counted twice. It gets counted once and then each of your eliminations get added to that for your total score. So that's we'll make sure that we are make uh, like on the same page for the duo partners. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, and the other question that got asked earlier regarding scores, uh, oh, it was that it was about each uh, player. Um, now a couple people have said that oh my game glitched at the end and uh, I didn't get the scores. So there are a couple other w- like moments, whether it be a replay or other pictures that we can accept in those instances, but we're gonna like be reasonable about that. If somebody is consistently not posting their statistics screen, they're up to something or they're not following the rules. And so uh, if it happens once or twice, uh, we understand these are video games. Sometimes they do have those glitches or kick you out, um, but you have the choice to not ready up or go back to lobby. Hit statistics screen when you get eliminated, take the picture, post it, and get ready for the next game. Yeah, uh, someone was asking about how many people we've had in the lobby. Um, we have a range of what we would have for a lobby, so if we end up getting uh, up to close to that cap, then we'll probably split them into two different lobbies um, right. at that point. So depending on how much we get, um, I think right now we're up to uh, about, I think, 80 kids that have signed up for varsity alone. So I think we'll probably have two lobbies. We'll see what it comes down to when we actually submit rosters and what schools actually submit. Um, but that's what we're looking at right now. Correct, yeah. Uh, we do have, uh, if you look at the Fortnite rules document, for those curious about that, we do have arrangements for if we need two or even three lobbies for the night, depending on how many people sign up. Uh, it's basically as simple as the first match starts at 5 o'clock, the second match starts at 6.30, and the third match starts at 8. Um, and that's if we need them. So uh, there is a plan in case we get that much interest. That would be a good problem to have. We'd be excited about that. Um, and then the way we would uh, assign people to their lobbies is basically making sure that they don't play against the same 80 people every week. Um, we would say this group is in the first match, this group's in the second match, this group's in the third match, and make that mixed up throughout the, uh, the course of the season. 
Yep, and also add for, you know, just this kind of see an overall of where people find out because we'll start to weed out the players with points um, towards the end of who who it is, and then we'll have some big matchups in these games. And um, when will they know what match they're in? When are you going to tell them if they're the 5 o'clock or the 6 or 30 or the 8? I would say that we could tell them that if the matches are on Tuesday for varsity, for example, we would let you know the Wednesday before. I don't see any reason that we couldn't figure that out quickly. It's okay. just a matter of. So then they can people. figure out arrangements for that if they have to play at eight right. o'clock, if they have, if they're playing from school, if they're going to be playing basically a week ahead of time is what I could pretty much tell them. And honestly, um, that's something we can figure out at the beginning of the year. We could just schedule everything at the beginning, and they know for the whole year. And if something comes up, obviously you just need to let the staff know. And there's a certain amount of flexibility with where to go. Uh, a question was asked by Blackhawk. If there are multiple lobbies, how do you determine who moves the next round? It's not like the three lobbies are not rounds that night. So over the course of the entire season, each duo's objective is to accrue as many points as possible. And the playoffs are determined by who has accrued the most points after a 10-week season. So um, it's not the uh, moving on to the second you know, game of the night. It's just that that's what you played that week. And this next week we'll play at this time, and you want to get as many points as possible through the 10 weeks. Right, and there's a possibility of you getting, like, 25 points one week and next week throwing up two. Oh, yeah, on that's welcome like, to so. Fortnite. Yeah, and it's, with it's, it being a 10-week season, I think there will be a lot of ways that, you know, um, teams can get way out ahead, but they can also get way back depending on how it ebbs and flows. And with Fortnite patches and whatnot, you never know when it could actually, uh, you know, swing to someone else's favor. Yeah, um, another good question Uh you might not play at the same time every week. That is correct. Um, how to make games you play per week? One Fortnite match is three consecutive games. So a whole match takes about an hour and a half, which is um, you know more than well about the same as an Overwatch match as it usually goes, and probably less than League. Um, but uh, three games consecutively. Each game is a maximum of twenty-five minutes, and we give a five-minute break in between to post scores and to get a drink of water or whatever you need to do. Um, other good questions. Uh, we're going to get to the arena thing in a second. Um, the uh, let's talk about the playoff question by Samurai. It says, "What made you choose Kill Race? Would that be based on luck?" So, unfortunately, just because of facilities, we don't have a place, at least yet, in Illinois, that we can get a hundred of the best Fortnite players in the state together, all on their own computers, all in the same lobby, and competing in a custom game together. We just don't have that. Um, and so, what we do is the top sixteen duos of after the whole season's done will go to the playoffs. And the way you have a kill race is just like Fortnite Friday rules, where if Todd and I are a duo and, you know, Samurai and your partner are a duo, and we're against each other in the first round, we jump in a squads game together. And then we split up and go to get as many eliminations as possible. And there are stipulations in the rules for if you tie, and you can guys can read that. Um, but it says it's based on luck. Some might go against pros, some not. That's not the case, because since we jump into a squads game together, all the other players in the lobby are the same players that the other duo is going up against. So, you know, if you happen to land in a spot where a pro landed and we didn't, that's tough, but um, there are that's a Fortnite. few rounds. <laughs> yeah, that's Fortnite. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there are a few rounds. So hopefully that limits the unluckiness of running into, you know, Ninja off drop. Um, so uh, all events are Tuesday. Varsity is Tuesday. JV is Monday. That's uh, that's that. JV's the same time, just Mondays. Um, one match per week. And uh, then each uh, Blackhawk said, again, three possible t uh, times we could start, 5, 6, 30, and 8. I yeah. think we are there. Uh, one platform we have to play on, no, Fortnite is all cross-platform. Regardless of what you're playing on, if you feel like you can handle this lobby on a mobile, knock yourself out. Um, we will still be in the same custom code together. So, yep. uh, whatever yeah, one, of my, one of my students right now is playing for mobile because he had his uh, system taken away at the moment. Hopefully, he'll get it nice. back before the season. So, he's Excellent. been playing with a controller on mobile. Cool. Um, well, let's go ahead and uh, do you have Fortnite up? Uh, no, it's still installing. Uh, mine is ready, so we'll we'll table that until we yep. got that up. I'm at 20%. Um, okay, so let's. One of the biggest elephants in the room is the next topic um, regular duos versus arena duos. Uh, when we. We're discussing this early on. There was an extremely strong argument for why it had to be regular duos, and that was that arena duos is technically a limited time mode. So it was possible that we would be doing arena duos, and then halfway through the season, Fortnite takes it down, and they only have trios available or, or squads or whatever it is. Um, the preseason has shown us that if we aren't doing arena, every game will come down to who has the most floppers at the end or who has the most med kits, and that has not been exciting at the end of matches. And so last night, 
Todd, me, and uh, Kennedy all had a conversation about it and came to the decision that we will play arena duos for the season. Um, that if for some reason Fortnite gets rid of it, we will tackle that when we get to it. But for the nature, for the competitive nature of this season, we decided it is worth the risk to go to arena and to play. Um, if you are unfamiliar with the differences, uh, the mats are capped at 500 each instead of 999. Uh, the siphon is in play, so eliminating players gives you health and shields. And also, the circle in the last few circles does not close within itself continually. Um, it will move. So potentially, the next circle is actually in the storm right now. Uh, and it forces people to rotate. And it's going to make the game a lot more exciting at the end. The calls should be exciting. It will force people to not just mat up and find medkits and then hide, but they're going to have to build. They're going to have to move, and they're going to have to shoot. And it should make the ending exciting. And we will get to the problem of uh, arenas being taken down if that happens. Hopefully it does not. Uh, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, and hopefully that makes people very happy. I know that that was a popular decision. Um, we d We made the decision because the LTM problem, but uh, experience has taught us otherwise. You know, knowledge is knowing, and wisdom is knowing, even though you know something else. I don't yeah, know. and if something happens before the season starts, we will definitely let you guys know. I mean, it was something we talked about for at about a half an hour, um, yeah. trying to figure out what what to do with it. And so, um, lots of people wanted to play arenas, and we looked into it. And we will have a set of rules if we swap back to normals, just so that everyone knows. Um, hopefully, that doesn't happen for the length of the season. Um, but we'll. We'll take it as it comes. Most yeah. people wanted to do arena, so uh, we made that change. Yep, we're I, like we said in the post last night. Um, at the end of the day, we are doing what we think you guys will love the most, what we think you will enjoy, uh, and what we think will be best for the competitive nature of this season. So we are playing arena duos for the entire Fortnite season, and that will begin um, next week with the third preseason week. We will go ahead and switch to arena for the preseason. Okay. Yep, and then we'll post it in Discord as well, um, and then you, if you guys can share it, obviously, around to your Fortnite players um, so that they know uh, that we'll be switching to Arena. So if you guys want to alter practice this week or next week for that, um, that would make sense. Awesome. Um, I don't think there's a whole lot of questions about that. I think it's mostly people just saying yay and, and emoting in chat. So um, well, let's move on to the next topic, which is uh, this cheating problem that happened and it was it showed itself last night more than i wanted to but uh it's a good thing we saw it um last night there was an incident where a number of individuals were teaming up together we have uh, some videos and screenshots of their gamer tags and who they were and saw that even in a duos match there was a group of up to 10 people um working together and obviously that's a problem and so what we're doing is we're working really hard to figure out to what school those uh players belong um contacting coaches throughout the state, seeing if we can figure it out. Uh, it's important to point out this system is cool, but it's not perfect. And what we, we, if you guys want the competitive feel of this season to be as good as it can be, you have to take personal pride in not sharing those custom codes. That's something for IHSEA use, uh, IHSEA use only. Um, so don't share them. When we post them, keep them to yourselves, keep them to your coaches, and let's have fun with the people that are signed up and ready to play. If we have people in the lobby that uh, are teaming or are having inappropriate names or whatever the case is, document it, send it to myself in Discord, send it to any of the staff, uh, and we will take steps that we can to deal with it. Um, there was an excellent documentation done last night uh, by a player from Naperville Central, which we appreciated. He got a video. We got it, and that's being submitted to Epic. Um, we're not messing around with this uh, inappropriate behavior that people are exhibiting and whether or not we are able to personally find out what school they attend, we can get the documentation and send it to Epic. And uh, anybody that plays Fortnite knows Epic will lay that hammer down. So um, I'm, I'm, that's what we'll do. We'll take those steps necessary as much as we can. Um, so a couple questions now. Um, Dave, I'll get to the spectating in a second. Um, Godlike Gamer said, can you have another friend that's not in the Fortnite roster run with me? No. Um, According to our rules, you have to be on the formal submitted roster by your school uh, to play on the Fortnite team uh, for IHSEA. Uh, and so, no, a little brother in middle school would also not be able to play it. Um, it it's got to be somebody at your high school representing your school on your roster playing together. If there are changes to duo partners, this is, this is uh, an interesting note, I guess, to bring up. Let's say Todd and I are duo partners, but then we have a huge fight in the middle of the season and we don't want to play with each other anymore. Well, if I change to another duo partner... 
our points reset for the season because that's not the same duo that was accruing points up to that point. So if you change duo partners, you just have to know you will go back to zero with that duo partner. Um, if Todd and I accrued 100 points up to that time, and then a week later we say, never mind, we made up, we want to go back to it, we still have 100 points because that duo had that point total. So your score is for the duo you play with. If you change partners, it will restart, and that's what you got to keep uh, in mind. Right. Um, and... Yeah, I think that dealt with that. Okay, so um, one of the uh, things that's going to be really exciting is we decided we're no longer going to stream the games live. So I will not be streaming while I'm in the game hosting with you guys. I will go ahead and eliminate myself, infect people, and grade papers, or who knows what else. Just enjoy you guys playing while it's going on. But we will actually stream from IHSA's Twitch page the replays. And that way we can get an omniscient third-person view, see gamer tags, see where people are building, not have to guess who's fighting against each other. Uh, and we'll stream the three replays in a what row. So it'll be the first match every night that will get streamed, the 5 o'clock match. It'll happen at 5, and then at 6.30-ish, we will start the stream uh, and do the replays of the first three games, and I will commentate it uh, as it was you know, happening live. Um, and maybe I'll keep the answer to myself as much as I possibly can about what happens uh, and try not to watch the ending. We'll see. Maybe it'll get a little exciting. Um, so that's exciting that we're going to be able to stream just like the World Cup, you'll see people's names, where they are, etc. Yeah, I think that I think that'll be a better experience overall, at least for right now, since we don't have a capability of doing that live. It's just doing the replays. Correct. Uh, Kyle asked a good question. If your partner is absent for a week, can you play as a single? You may. Uh, you do have to still queue up in duos, so you would just solo drop into the island of other people that have duos, um, and that's probably the best way. If you play, if Todd and I are duo partners, and we've been playing for six weeks, seventh week he can't play for whatever reason, and I play by myself. The total I get still goes towards our duo's total. Correct. Because you didn't but, play with someone new, so it's still correct. the same duo. You just played short. Exactly. So, uh, yes, you may play by yourself. Um, uh, Blackhawk, if you're on console, should you take a picture with your phone to submit to Discord? Yes, that's what a lot of my players do. It's easy. It's good quality. You just got to make sure you get the whole screen. See everything. If I don't see your placement, if it's cut off, you don't get points for placement. End of story. You have to document everything. It's the only way to do that um oh samurai did point out i i think that might be the case maybe that's true i i can't confirm i don't know off the top of my head if that's true samurai it says arena will not let you ready up without a duo um if that's the case then you would not be able to play without your duo partner um so there's that um we'll find out okay. with that with it might work different with custom code it might not we'll see it might i will have one of, I'll, what i'll do is i'll have somebody from springfield try that that's the next preseason match and we'll, we'll just keep it simple like that and figure it out from home um do we have Fortnite up? Uh, no, I don't know. Was Great. there a big patch like this week or what? Uh, mine was. I don't know. Mine patched. It was. Uh, I don't know. I got on it and it said it was at eighty. So yeah, I was. Um, mine was fifty-two. I don't ever open up Epic Games, so it could be I have a backlog. Plus, I'm uploading right now, so right. I could be changing um, my bandwidth. I will. I'll do my best to explain to people if we get it up. Great. So for those of you that haven't played custom matches before. It's not that difficult, but you do have to follow the directions in order and correctly. So what you do is when you go to the screen where you can pick whether you want to play solos, duos, whatever, you go there and you hit Arena Duos and you click it. And then before you hit Accept, at the bottom right of your screen, there's something that says Custom Matchmaking. You click on that. When you click on Custom Matchmaking, you then input a code, which we put in the IHSCA Discord before each match. So for example, the last one, it was uh, the first preseason match, it was all lowercase no spaces, IHSEA preseason one. And you input that code. And then you hit accept, and then you get back to your main lobby screen, and you hit ready. If you've done it correctly, it will say matchmaking, dot, 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 for a second. And then you'll see a message that says so-and-so number of people in queue. That's when you know you're good. You're totally readied up. It says so-and-so in queue. And then at exactly the time the match is supposed to start, I, on my end, hosting it, will hit start match, which you guys do not see, and it will put everybody in. If you are not readied up by that time, you will not be in that game. You can join for game two or three, um, but you will not be in there. And so what we have found is it's really important that you get on in a punctual time and, and try to get on if you have an issue or if you're not inputting it correctly for some reason. It'll give you a few extra minutes to figure it out. If you get there last second, you can't figure it out, you spam me in Discord, it's too late. You need to, you need to take care of that. Yep, especially watch your autocorrect if you're entering on a console or something. Yes. Because um, it will change things like that. Watch your autocorrect on anything you're doing. 
uh, make sure capitalization matters. Like I got in one try, no problem. Um, and then people yesterday were like, oh, I can't get in. It doesn't work. And it was capitalization and this and that. So make sure you copy and paste it exactly um, how we post it. Exactly. Yeah. And th th so many times we got messaged these last two weeks. The code doesn't work. The code works. We've got over 60 people in the queue. The code works. It is always a matter of uh, inputting it correctly. So make sure you do that. You do it in order. Um, and uh, yeah, that's the, how to input the codes. If, if we can get Fortnite up on Todd's computer, um, I'll start mine and we can host it and show you that on the screen. Um, the last thing I'd like to say about Fortnite tonight is remember that we've got to encourage good sportsmanship in this season. Um, Fortnite is by its own nature really full of trash talk. And I get that. And, and it's fun, and we like trash talking, but also there is a line that can't be crossed. So make sure the line is not crossed. If behavior is inappropriate, there are steps in the Fortnite rules that we will take action and, and make sure that uh, that does not happen. So keep the sportsmanship good. Remember, this is a uh, high school like scholastic competition, just like uh, any of our other games or a traditional sport, and you guys have to behave in that way. So uh, remember that Fortnite trash talk is fun until it's not. So make sure that line does not get crossed. Right, and definitely, obviously, stay away from anything that you might think if your coach or your parents heard you say it would be inappropriate because that right. will definitely get you in trouble. If you won't say it in front of grandma, maybe don't say it to a kid you don't know from a different school. So um, if you would say it to grandma, then maybe don't say it anyway. Um, so that's that's my two cents on Fortnite. Um, the, this would be a good time for questions to be asked. Um, and then... Uh, or if Todd has anything to add or questions to clarify, I'm happy to answer as much as I can for Fortnite. So, um, just so everyone knows, also uh, the actual date of the live event is going to be um, it's April 18th, so Saturday, yes. April 18th. So the top uh, that will be the top eight duos. So, yeah, so what we're going to do is the, the Tuesday before that, which is, do you have the calendar in front of you? Uh, I'm just looking at your rules. Okay, hold on. Just uh, Tuesday the 14th. Yes, Tuesday the 14th is the first round of the playoffs. So the top 16 duos um, will cut it down in half that evening. They'll do, the, they'll do the kill races, Fortnite Fridays against each other. And then the remaining top eight duos will meet in person at a location to be determined still. Um, and that will be on Friday, April 18th. And we will duke it out there and... and uh, to crown our IHSEA Fortnite champions at that event. Um, if for some reason space is limited, and uh, if we only had a place, say, that could handle eight computers, or maybe they have 10 computers or whatever, um, we may cut down the round of 16 and the round of eight on the 14th, but we'll keep you guys posted once we have a location. So that week will be playoff week. Uh, JV does not have an in-person playoffs. Only, only Varsity has in-person playoffs. The JV playoffs all happen from home, uh, but in the same way that the Varsity playoffs will happen. So... Okay. Okay. So people are just asking general questions. Make sure you guys read through the rules. Some of these things are really like on the first page, like what times we're playing. We talked about it already. Uh, this video will be posted on YouTube and posted in the chat um, for Fortnite so people can watch it. Also going to be emailed to all the coaches who are um, thinking about participating. That way you can have all your players watch it if they haven't watched it yet. Um, and then we will be, I will be online and possibly Dalton remotely one of these other weeks. Um, next week's going to be primarily Overwatch. And the week after that will be primarily League of Legends to get all these rules discussions done and handled um, before the season actually starts for all the games. So, uh, But we will be around in Discord. We also possibly might you know, drop an impromptu stream right before the season to make sure everyone knows how to do a tournament code and how to do uh, our lobby code and how to do all the other stuff, submit scores. Um, that way they know um, what to look for. Um, if you guys are looking for anything, uh, all the rules and the roster submissions, I did pin it in the Discord channel on uh uh, on the Fortnite channel on our Discord. Um, I just pinned it today, so just check the pins on the Fortnite channel. You can see all the links for everything that you might need. And then make sure your coaches sign the registration form. Uh, registration is for all different games, so make sure you're, you guys know if you're doing Overwatch League and Fortnite or just one of them or whatever when they sign up. They can change it later, but just try to get it ahead now because um, we're going to start sending a little bit more emails specifically to the teams that are playing uh, games so we can make sure everything's in on time. Yeah. Um, the a couple questions I see, uh, other games talked about, I am going to briefly talk about the Capitals Classic Super Smash Brothers tournament tonight because we are hosting that in Springfield. Um, and then the, when the World Lego season began, like Todd said, look at the rules. We lay everything out. 
but the preseason is the Tuesdays of January, and the regular season begins the first Monday of February for JV and the first Tuesday of February for Varsity. So um, I think I'm content moving on from Fortnite, and if they have questions, DM me. Look at the rules. Uh, look at the rules first, then DM me. Um, but yeah, there's that. Cool. Um, so uh, quick spiel about the Capitals Classic Super Smash Brothers tournament. Uh, February 22nd is a Saturday. Uh, in Springfield, we're going to host uh, what I've been told by uh, a gentleman who runs the Great River Valley Smash region, which is a huge part of the Midwest, uh, runs tournaments for Smash in the area. That might be the biggest high school Super Smash Brothers tournament in the Midwest. Uh, and I'm really excited about that. But we're going to host up to 160 people at Springfield High School in Springfield for a Smash tournament that will feel very much like all professional Smash tournaments like Evo and other ones uh, where we will have pool play in the morning and then the top cut from pools will make it to a bracket in the afternoon, and we will figure out one-on-one uh, -on -one with two out of three matches and uh, standard competitive stages and all that good stuff, uh, who the best Smash players in the state are. Uh, we'll probably give awards to top five on the day, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, uh, do we have that form able to post right now? So we can see that again. It is definitely up in chat. Uh, and we'll smash. Post it in it's just uh, exclamation point smash for that sign up. Ah, there we go. Thank you. Um, so this is the form. If you are interested in signing up for the Super Smash Brothers tournament in Springfield, it's called the Capitals Classic. Uh, the other exciting thing about this is we've doubled this as a huge recruitment event. Um, we're going to bring colleges from all over the Midwest as well to this. A lot of already has, are RSVP'd, and uh, they're going to be able to talk to you guys about esports and college and scholarships. And uh, of every one we've invited, every college we have invited gives scholarships for esports. So um, we would love to have people there, get a uh, conversation about you know, your secondary education uh, past high school, and it uh, should be a lot of fun. Figure out who the best Smash player is and see if you can take your talents to college. Even if you don't play Smash, there's going to be colleges there for all of the kinds of games. Yeah, cool. I, I think it's going to be fun. I just talked to my guys today, and I think they're down for it. We have to actually talk to the kids to make sure. Um, what time does it start, just for my reference? So we're going to start check-in as early as 8.30. Okay. Um, I know that some of the Chicago schools have a long drive because we did when we went to the Oswego exactly. East one. Um, but uh, the tournament will start at 930. Okay, um, so essentially so, plan to be there by 9. Yeah, if you're there by 9, you're going to be squared away. Um, it's going to be $10 a person. So uh, each school is allowed no more than 10 people to represent their school. That's worth noting. Uh, and then um, we'll take as many people as we can, up to 160 kids. That's a perfect number for pool play and brackets. And, uh, excuse me. I need to get a water when I came up here. Um, and then 160 kids max, uh, $10 a kid. And that goes down to $7 if you bring a monitor and switch with you to help speed up the tournament. So if you want to bring the setups, we'll uh, reward you with less money being spent. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, like my team is probably, and we might even like co op a bus and find out if any other Chicago schools want to go. And that would be awesome. With the cost, you know, we got, we're bringing 10, someone else bringing 10. That actually fills up the bus and makes it almost worth the three hour trip then. Yeah, splitting costs. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, the last cool thing I'll mention about it is we are having it professionally broadcasted by UGS Gaming, um, and so uh, it will be very, very high quality stream experience, uh, commentators, all kinds of good stuff going on at this tournament. Uh, we want to make this a pretty big thing that we could hopefully do annually for everyone uh, and make it a big recruitment event as well. So Capitals Classic, uh, you can just hit exclamation point smash and chat and uh, get the form there. And I hope to see 160 kids there. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah, I think it should be really good. Cool. Uh, so I uh, I don't see anything in chat right now that needs to really quickly be addressed. So if you guys have questions, uh, read the Fortnite rules. And uh, if you still have questions, DM me in Discord. Uh, I'm at Coach McGee in the IHSA Discord. Uh, and if you're a sprinkled kid that's commenting, uh, leave me alone. So. <laughs> cool. Yeah, sounds good. Well, yeah, guys, thanks for joining us tonight. Um, we'll talk about Overwatch next week, so let all your buddies know that Overwatch will be talking about next week as well as uh, League of Legends the week after. Um, we're almost here, guys. We have like two weeks until stuff starts to kick off. So, crazy. Yeah, so get ready. I mean, this is gonna this is gonna go pretty crazily. So um, get ready for all the the. the uh, it, I don't even know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be so busy five days a week. Like oh, we're we're gonna wait. be live five days a week. Like, I'm not even ready for that. But I'm super excited. I'm very super excited. Yep, me too. So, um, thanks again for joining us. Again, I will put this video on YouTube 
uh, it probably won't upload tonight, um, but I'll start to upload tonight and I should get it up tomorrow morning. Um, that way you guys can see it um, and share it with everyone and I will post it in chats and email it to people so all you guys can watch it. But definitely check out the rules. Please read the rules. Yes. Um, watch the video. We didn't go over everything line by line. Um, I really hope we don't need to do that because it would be a very boring live stream. Um, but that's why I wanted to ask you guys questions. So read the rules. Come back to us on Discord. Um, if we need to do another cast, we will with rules discussion. Um, I think it could be very important. Um, but we don't want to bore you guys with an hour and a half of reading line by line. Um, have your captains read. Have your coaches read. Make sure you know everything that needs to happen. Just to recap, 5 o'clock on Monday for JV is the first match. 6.30, 8 o'clock. If need be, and varsity is on Tuesday. Same thing, five o'clock, first match, six thirty, eight o'clock, um, and we will post all those schedules and everything as we get closer. Make sure to start getting your rosters in. Figure out who's going to be on varsity and JV. Uh, talk to them all there. I think that those are due January twenty eighth. January twenty eighth. So yeah, so uh, yeah, January twenty eighth at eleven fifty nine p.m. That's when you got to get your Fortnite rosters in by. And uh, the Capitals are probably going to take every bit of that second to decide who's going to be varsity for us. Luckily, I don't have enough to have a full JV or varsity team, so they'll probably just all play varsity. Fair enough. So. All right, guys. Thank you, everyone, for joining me. Thank you, C Blonded. You guys have a great night, and we'll see you next week with Overwatch. Let's see, see you guys, guys on Discord. Have a good night.